Hello, how are you doing? I hope you're getting into the festive season. Uh, I know I am. Uh, we just put up our Christmas tree recently. Uh, we always put it up quite late because we want to make sure it actually survives through Christmas itself. Um, you know, all the needles don't fall off because uh, that has happened in the past and it's always really sad when that happens. Uh, but also, uh, just recently, I finished reading a very short new book uh, which was so good and uh, poignant and and meaningful and it feels like a new classic Christmas story. I mean, when I think of classic Christmas stories, I you know, obviously think of A Christmas Carol by Dickens, uh, but also the short story, uh, The Greatest Gift by Philip Van Dorn Stern, uh, which inspired the movie uh, It's a Wonderful Life, and uh, also A Christmas Memory by Truman Capote, and the, the Christmas sections of uh, Little Women. Uh, and the main theme that, that Kind of Christmassy theme that goes through all of these stories is a spirit of generosity and a sense of homecoming and that's something that's also in this new novella uh, Small Things Like These by Claire Keegan uh, which is an Irish story um, it's set in the mid 80s uh, just before Christmas and uh, it feels like it encompasses all of these like major themes that you get in Christmas stories while also delivering a really powerful social commentary. So the story focuses on Bill Furlon uh, who's a coal and timber merchant and since it's right in the lead up uh, to Christmas and in the middle of winter time uh, he's it's a really busy time for his business and he's making lots of deliveries uh, around the, the village um, so he's interacting with a lot of the local population and uh, times are, are quite hard um, for, for I think everyone in uh, the village um, but you know he and his wife have a really strong partnership and um, they have five daughters um, so she's very busy at home and, and making Christmas preparations they're, they're making the Christmas cake and uh, he's trying to get all through all of his deliveries uh, so he can get back home uh, but also he's interacting with a number of people in the, the local community and so we get all these wonderful descriptions and snippets of sort of local life through the dialogue and the, the descriptions that Claire Keegan gives of uh, the local area that really vividly conjures all this village life. And he makes a delivery to the local convent, uh, which is one of his most important customers, one of his most lucrative customers, um, which is quite an important detail. And there he discovers um, something quite disturbing about a training school for girls um, that they have at this convent. And he's suddenly made aware of it and uh, then he, he's suddenly struck with this, this choice of, of what is he going to do about this. And for such a short book, I think the author packs so much into this. Uh, the, it, it completely conjures this community and, and, and you, you at first get this quite like warm sense that, it, um, that even though you know, times are hard, it's a very supportive um, environment. Uh, but then you are slowly made aware of slightly more sinister things going on in uh, in this village and what is not being said and consciously left out and I think there's a really poignant exchange he he has with uh, one of his colleagues um, who when he raises this issue of something he's seen in this convent and uh, she says to him uh, tis no affair of mine you understand but you know you'd want to watch over what you'd say about what's there keep the enemy close the bad dog with you and the good dog will not bite you know yourself and that's such a like vivid way of uh i think described sort of like subtly warning him uh you know that he he shouldn't make a fuss about this and it puts him in a real quandary of of what's he gonna do um and at the same time we get a lot of small details about his personal past and life itself, his life um, and his development, how he was an orphan and he was taken in by a benefactor and so he really benefited from that. Um, but also there are some facts which were concealed from him and not spoken about his own personal life and there's a point in the book where he comes to a realization about his own identity and um, and so that's built into it as well but also this, this sense of how 
how um, you know this this sense of justice I think it's given him because he's been raised in this way so um, he does I think have this real strong moral character and at the same time he's aware you know he doesn't want to rock the boat too much um, because there are social and financial pressures upon him that if he you know makes a fuss and and says something and and uh, and alienates himself from the people around him you know including his own family and his neighbors and his colleagues that this will cause a lot of problems for him. So I really felt the immediacy of his dilemma and the, the choice that he has to make and, and I think the, the author portrays that so strongly while also putting in um, these slight points um, uh, about life in general and uh, and how it's lived and and the um, the, the tough choices that, that we face in, in everyday life while also making a strong statement about this dark aspect of, of Ireland's past um, so there's there's a note at the the end of this novella um, about the that gives a very brief history and, and um, facts about the Magdalene laundries, um, which was a big scandal in, in Ireland, um, which continued up until like relatively recently, um, which was an institution um, where uh, young unwed single uh, pregnant women um, were taken into uh, these Magdalene laundries because their families were ashamed of them, um, their, their communities um, didn't want them, and uh, so they were taken into these spaces largely run by religious organizations, um, but they, they were sort of state sanctioned and, um, and life was very hard for these young women there. They, they were mistreated and, and sometimes their, their babies were given away and so there's this much like bigger issue looming in the back of this story but what you get is the immediacy of Bill's life as he's going throughout his day and uh, yeah the way she portrays that is is so powerful and uh, poignant and gives this overall message which feels very Christmassy that we all ought to be vigilant uh, for the needs of, of the people around us, um, both in our families and in our communities, and that we need to care and, and support each other, um, you know, through hard times. And uh, and it's, it's such a moving message. I think it's so impressive how Claire Keegan is able to write this story, which is genuinely heartwarming, but which doesn't feel overly sentimental and, and which makes a, a really powerful statement in itself. Um, so, so yeah, for such a short book, um, it's so impactful and it feels like the perfect thing to read around this time of year and also because it's quite short um, you know and this is a busy time uh, I, I just read it you know within two to three hours and um, so it's it's quite quick to, to get through and uh, yeah I think it's going to continue on being a, a Christmas classic going on into to the future I mean a lot of um, authors and, and publications have been listing it as uh, one of their best books of, of the year and I totally agree with that um, so I, I'd love to here if you've read this book and if you have any thoughts about it um, or if you've read any of Claire Keegan's other books. I think she's published a few other uh, books as well which I've not read. Um, I'd really love to have recommendations about that um, or if you're interested in reading it now I'd, I'd uh, yeah, love to, to know about that but, uh, but I hope you're doing well and that you're reading good things around this time and getting some good relaxing uh, time uh, but also time with your friends and family family that you really love. I'm really looking forward to that uh, as well. And I hope you have a very Merry Christmas. I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.